Hello and welcome to another Mugmen Reviews, where today we're going to be taking a look at the Vintage Wave Green Goblin. And, uh, of course, like any Vintage Wave figure, we're going to open it with utmost care and decency. <sighs> that goddamn minute! All that just to get a look at this goofy goblin. Thank god I have another one, and definitely didn't destroy the package of, that I fixed up his eyes in kind of a jank and cheap way, and you kind of see some of the yellow paint, because the yellow paint was terrible. I appreciate my brother letting me use his paint, but yeah. From a distance, this guy looks pretty alright. But we're not talking about this guy, we're talking about the original. Actually, we'll talk about this guy briefly. While the paint apps are good, his eyes are really fucking weird and really big for no reason. Now, we'll be doing the rest of the review with this one. Because this bitch is about to be a hobgoblin. You know, considering this guy is like 20 something dollars and, you know, has no build-a-figure piece, the least Hasbro could do is flow, throw in a flight stand. Right now I got him on a fucking candle. And since I'm at my brother's house and don't have all of his accessories, good thing I had the other one. So, uh, yeah. Despite this coming in comic book style packaging, I misspoke, meant to say animated series style packaging. This Green Goblin is more of a, like, 60s, 70s comics looking Green Goblin. And I must say, looks pretty cool. Now there's something I've noticed, which you might not be able to pick up on, especially when it's this close and unfocused. There's like a little white speck of paint there, right? But on the other one, there's also a little white speck of paint. That's fucking weird. That was very weird. So kind of just swapped the heads because uh, old one's belt's a little messed up. So uh, the details, I mean, generic body, reused uh, arms and legs, but looks pretty cool, all things considered. Very, very classic green goblin we got here. Even if the uh, purple is a very pink shade of purple and the bag is just straight up pink. I mean, it's fitting, it's in keeping with the design as far as I remember. And again, most of the times when I read those fucking comics from the 70s, they were in those big-ass black and white, what were they called, essentials? Anyone else remember those? This is just a big-ass collection of like 38 issues of Amazing Spider-Man, all in black and white. So it was up to my imagination to imagine whatever the hell colors these characters were. I, don't even, I remember reading like the, the issue where the Cyclone shows up while Peter's in France and I just, I just had no... No fucking visual for what the fuck colors that guy would look like. I bet you if I were to find that comic in color, I'd be like, look at that and be like, huh. So that's, that's what he actually looks like. That's fucking weird. That's very fucking weird. I actually kind of think of it. Most of those comics I read was after the original Clone Saga. So that's even weirder. Uh, the sculpted detail is nice. There is one problem. This little cuff on the, uh, that, that, uh, bell you might hear is my brother's cat. This, like, cuff thing, it's supposed to be, you know, ripped detail on, like, his goblin shirt. The problem is it, like, hangs up a little much and does not want to stay down. So maybe I could take a little heat to it and form it to this guy. I mean, look, look, you can see that little little gap. And also, this is, like, really loose. I wish this, like, had, like, a peg or something. I don't know. I mean, actually, I think I'd rather it be loose like this so I can actually display it like he's on his glider and it's, uh, back. I mean, yeah, I guess that can kind of work. I don't know, I was thinking about painting this guy a deeper, darker purple and painting the bag something else anyhow. What do you guys think? In terms of accessories, he does come with the glider, but no stand, even though it has, like, the peg for the stand. And my brother was originally trying to make that demo goblin figure. I wonder if he has that flight stand, because I would, I would buy that off of him. However, unlike the Onslaught Wave Green Goblin and then the other one Hasbro made in hell, even the Ultimate Green Goblin, this one comes up with a friggin' Norman Osborn head. Also, Norman Osborn's a Green Goblin. It's Gwen Stacy's boyfriend! Although, uh, this head looks nice, but the other one I have is at home, and, uh, paint apps aren't exactly the best on this. Like, there's some, like, flesh tones bleeding into his red, weird cornrow things. Actually, maybe it's just this lighting, but his hair looks more brown than it does anything else. Yeah, that's weird. His hair's supposed to be a weird fucking red. But it's brown here. What? 
What the fuck? He also has a pumpkin bomb that has a lot of detail and a opaque greenish flame, which is kind of weird. Like you would think it would be transparent or something. But no, no, it's completely opaque. I wonder why. It has some rather excellent paintwork, at least on this buckle. They remembered to paint this one silver, not the other one. No, the whole rest of this satchel is pink. Now, in terms of articulation... Okay, let me zoom the camera out because i got a really jank setup here. Now, in terms of articulation, his head goes uh, this far up and this far down with the Norman Osborn head on. He's got no head pivoting from side to side. Now, with the Goblin head on, it moves pretty far up despite, you know, the weird cap thing, actually. And a pretty good degree down. A little tiny bit of neck pivot, which is great for you can have some crazed ass looking goblin here about to go touch Gwen Stacy. It's consensual, of course. I mean, she is, he is the father of uh, Gwen Stacy's kids, after all. And of course, you got your rotation and all that good stuff. Now, at the shoulders, they go out about that far, and thank God that's molded plastic or else hella paint rub. Actually, this one I think goes out a little more. Maybe if I can force it. Yeah. Eh, about that much. He's got a bicep swivel, double-jointed elbows that uh, don't do the full, like, I, I do more than 90. Maybe I can fix that the same, I guess it's about 90. I, maybe I can fix that the same way I fix it on a Spider-Man. Uh, he's got rotation at the wrist and a wrist hinge. And the hinge is the same way on the other hand. All right, he's got an ab crunch that goes a disappointing degree forward, but, you know, he's like 50. How limber is he going to be? And pretty far back, actually. Uh, waist rotation. His thighs go uh, out that far. Back that far. And uh, forward this far. Pretty decent degree forward. He's got an upper thigh rotation. Double jointed knees. Boot rotation, which is always missing from Spider-Man. But since this is not a Spider-Man figure, I will not freak out. Uh, ankle rocker moves uh, that far down. That far up, and of course, Hasbro's styling ankle pivot. Honestly, can't wait to make one of these guys into a hobgoblin. Now, using the jankiest uh, tape measure of all time, and these two being, of course, the exact same figure, you can see that they're standing at about a height of eh, a little over uh, six and a half inches tall, especially to the ears. Now, for some size comparison. So here he is standing next to his uh, rival for Gwen Stacy's affection. We have Putengus Parker, uh, vintage, and Putengus Parker uh, PS4 edition. Both kind of modified, and at first I thought this guy was a little shorter than he should be, but he's just standing kind of awkwardly. Still uh, no luck securing the uh, second one so I can modify this guy. And uh, got to make a review for him. And yeah, you look uh, in scale. I mean, maybe he is just a little shorter than I expected because I kind of thought Spider-Man would be tall, but, uh, yeah, looks pretty good. All things considered. Since I'm away from my own collection, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends ghost that my brother so kindly provided without his permission and without his knowledge. And don't worry, they felt like that before I got here. Though, uh, hi Zora, you know how to fix that. And actually, I have yet to get that Electro, but I noticed my brother also has one of these Green Goblins. Oh, that's cool. He's not exactly a big fan of comic Marvel Legends. He's more of an uh, MCU collector. That's pretty badass. Honestly, my brother has a much better way of displaying his collection than I do. And here he is standing next to a Mezco Spider-Man, and not a custom, or bootleg, but the real thing. Thank my dad, because uh, this is a Christmas present. Thank you, Dad. I love you. Uh, yeah, I would have thought he was, like, I would have thought he'd be a little tall for Marvel Legends scale, and maybe that's still the case. I don't know. It still seems like he works. He works in scale with Marvel Legends. But now I'm torn, because do I use the real Mezco, or do I use my custom in that next stop motion? Even though, uh, the Master Planner's, uh, demise, or whatever the hell I called that, uh, serial, that, that didn't exactly go so well. Besides, this next one, it's involving goblins like this fuck. And I'm glad I got this guy because my Onslaught Wave Green Goblin's leg broke. Like, I was able to put a pin in the joint right there, but it's still broken. And I don't really want to use him, just in case. 
Yeah, I expect a review of this guy soon. And uh, the new custom Mezco Spider-Man I made. Yes, because I made a freaking third variation. Trust me, this one is probably my best one. And it still looks like garbage. And here he is standing next to the uh, Marvel Legends Fat Daddy, also. First Kingpin figure. Pretty cool. It's uh, based off the animated series. Wish I was born a couple of years earlier so I could have bought like one of the old Toy Biz ones. Or I wish I had the money to buy all the Build-A-Figure pieces and have the other one. Mainly just to have a more modern Kingpin because this is like a 1970s, 1980s Kingpin. But he looks great. Just that his style is a little outdated because who the hell wears one of those? What is it? That fucking cravat? What the hell do you call that thing? Whatever. No one wears them anymore. Well, I can't really do the sud rating because that's taken, but uh, I will say, if you like vintage comic book things and you like Green Goblins and Spider-Mans, this figure is uh, definitely a must-have, especially if you don't have any other, other Hasbro uh, Green Goblins, aside from, like, the Ultimate Green Goblin. But, uh, yeah, the Mugman recommends is a very good figure right here, especially when you can uh, fix up his eyes so he doesn't look as goofy. Well, have a good day, everyone, and uh, keep collecting. Oh, wait, that's also someone else's thing. Shit, am I going to...